The European Union's imposing sanctions on six Russian individuals over the poisoning of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. The asset freezes and travel bans reportedly target people in the Defence Ministry and the Spy Agency. Navalny is recovering in Berlin after being poisoned in Siberia in August. Uh, Moscow, though, continues to deny any responsibility. With us on Skype from Brussels now, Theresa Fallon. She's the director of the Centre for Russia, Europe and Asia Studies. Nice to have you with us, uh, Theresa. What do sanctions like this actually do? Is this almost a bit of window dressing by the European Union to make it appear that they're doing something? Uh, good evening, Kamal. I think that they're proportional. They're reasonable and they're actually focused on the people who were closely involved with this. So they won't be able to travel to Europe and their assets could be frozen. In addition, they're also sanctioning the, the institute where this compound was created, the Novichok compound. So I think it's an important sign, though, because it's very difficult for the 27 EU member states to all get together and speak from the same page. We saw recently with the attempts to have sanctions on Belarus, they couldn't get it passed because of one member state, uh, Cyprus, was blocking it. So this is a good sign that they were able to all come together and have these proportional, focused, targeted sanctions. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Agreement across Europe is, is rare, isn't it? Um, Russia's reaction, though, I mean, I suspect, well, first of all, it's still denying it had anything to do with it. And second of all, I suspect it won't be too concerned by these or will attempt to, to brush them off. Of course, they've denied it. And there have been all sorts of incredible stories that uh, Navalny even poisoned himself, according to some people back in Moscow. But I think that... Uh, Germany and, and France are together on this. They, they produce a 500-page report. They feel they have enough evidence to really push this through. And we've seen it's almost a two-handed approach because they've been able to keep uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is Germany, it's in Germany's backyard, off the, the negotiation table. So on one hand, Germany is supporting sanctions, but on the other, they're saying don't touch Nord Stream 2. Is anyone else in a position to do anything here? I guess I'm extending a little bit beyond Europe here, but any further pressure on Russia over this? Because when it happened, it was obviously a, a, a huge story, and it still is, but has perhaps been overshadowed by a whole lot of other things now. Lest we forget, a man was poisoned here. It's very true. I mean, uh, the time, history, things are moving so rapidly these days, especially with COVID-19. Uh, the United States has been silent on this, which is quite interesting with the Trump administration. So the fact that the EU actually is, you know, since December 2019 with the new European Commission, they've described themselves as geopolitical, looking through the world with the ge through a geopolitical lens rather than just an economic lens. So I think that they're really taking... Uh, the lead on this. And yes, there are sanctions, but they want to sh send an important message that these poisonings will not be acceptable and that, that they won't just sit back. So I think that they're trying to flag this issue that even though Navalny was poisoned within Russia, mm. uh, later he was flown to Germany for help, the earlier Skripal attack in, in the UK took much longer to have sanctions to get all the EU member mm. states on the same page. So the fact that they were able to do this rather rapidly, I think, sends a, a firm message that this is going to take place. And yesterday we saw the high representative call uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov to inform him about the situation. Just while you were talking, we were looking at some pictures there on the other side of the screen of, of Alexei Navalny being interviewed. I just wonder about your thoughts about his future. Obviously, his, his health is the most important thing, but do you think he has, uh, still has a, a political voice, the, the, the movement that supported him, the people that supported him? Is that still strong? I mean, this is not the first attempt on his life. You know, his eye is uh, damaged from a previous uh, acid attack on him. So the fact that he continues, I think, you know, obviously Novichok really took a huge toll on his life. He was in an induced coma for one month in Germany. And so he's learning to walk again. And it's very, very difficult for him. Uh, it seems unsure if he will be allowed to return to Russia. Putin might just prefer that he stays out of the country. So it remains to be seen if he will even be allowed to return to Russia. Uh, his assets have been seized and his apartment has been taken away uh, for investigation for supposedly corrupt corruption issues. So this is maybe how the Russian state is 
deciding to deal with Navalny. But it remains to be seen if he'll stay in Germany. He says he really does want to go back to Russia. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? Teresa Fallon uh, with us from Brussels. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Kamal.